I was terrified. What if five people came? What if they thought I was unqualified? What if no one cares? Why did I think I could make a difference? I am not Patricia Arquette at the Academy Awards, and I'm not Reese Witherspoon with a production company. I am certainly not Shonda Rhimes on Thursday night. But these thoughts, they paralyzed me. Yet when the conversation came up, I couldn't shy away from joining in on any discussion about representation and compensation of women in the entertainment world. It was just too hot a topic, and it was really important to me personally. I'd been in the film industry for almost 20 years, and I had seen little to no change. On television, only one in 10 sportscasters and a third of all broadcast journalists are women. Why was it that a woman calling a baseball game became a big story? I wanted to join in on, on the topic in all three of these areas. What I was seeing in my real world wasn't matching what was in my entertainment world. I have three sons and one daughter. I worry about my boys in school. I worry about them having equity in student government, in class ranking. I worry when they start applying to colleges and getting those acceptance letters because girls are the majority and they're continuing to grow. I don't worry about my daughter. She's nine. She has leadership opportunities. She's already running for student council. She has excellent academic and athletic outlets. These girls have made leaps and bounds. But let's flash forward to when they're out of college and they're in the workforce. It's a complete flip. I don't worry about my boys. They'll be fine. They'll have a zillion opportunities. I'm already thinking about every leg up and every opportunity I can give my daughter because she'll need it. Something is just not right about this. So with this issue being so important to me personally, what was going to win? The need to really do something or my fear of failure? My fear I was too small to make a difference. So I realized I was never going to be able to guarantee success. I had to change my thinking, and I had to reconcile with failure. I really sat myself down and had a talk about failing. I had to be okay with failing at the beginning. This was something new. That didn't mean it wasn't important. It didn't mean it wasn't a good idea. It may mean I need more time, um, a, maybe a new direction. But I knew if no one listened, I was at that point, I would keep talking until they did. So with the support of a few really respected colleagues, my husband, and the framework of my day job, I jumped in and put together the first summit to address women in film, television, and sports. It was last November. We had an 800-person venue, and we turned people away. We held workshops in the spring and had triple-capacity waiting lists. And now there are more requests and partners than we can really manage. To pull this off, I had to put together smart, informed, passionate people. I learned from people like Kathy Shulman and Gina Davis, and they were deep in the data. They were leading women in film and the Gina Davis Institute on gender in media, and they wanted to help me get started. I knew I had to grab that opportunity, I had to act quickly, and I had to do something different. Through launching Women in Entertainment, we've created a space that is unique. We didn't want to create another brand where we were giving out awards. We didn't want to create an opportunity where we were just pontificating on what we should be doing. We created a space that could forge relationships, a safe place for mentorship, and an honest forum where women and men could come together, they could laugh, they could cry, they told funny stories, they told serious stories, but they were stories that everyone could learn from. This is not just a women's outlet. It's a place where we're exploring the challenges of diversity, sexuality, gender, and career evolution things we're all facing every day, all day. 
When we set the structure for the summit, we had two pillars that we really based on from the beginning. The first was that the conversation had to be positive and it had to be forward thinking. We weren't gonna sit around and bash each other and we weren't gonna keep looking backwards. And the second was that action had to be taken no matter how small. So on that day, as the conversations were going on, we kept stopping ourselves and asking the women, you know, what can you do? How can this help you? How can this help other women? We had to keep checking ourselves for that or it would just be talk. Our partners and our guests really responded to these ideas. They were different from anything they'd heard before. It was appreciated that we were offering more than just a female perspective. We were looking at perspectives of the men and women of color in the LGBTQ community. We wanted a place for more. One of my favorite quotes out of that day came from a director, and she said, I really hope it becomes not about womanhood or manhood, but let's include all the hoods. And that's, that's something that we were feeling. So again, out of, our, out of our summit, we wanted to take action. So after that, throughout the year and what we, we took away from the summit, we started to put together workshops. They focused on producing, marketing, and distribution. Each had space for about 90 people and we had triple the interest. We offered additional sessions on financing, on creating your own brand. I like to say we really worked to put tools in their tool belt. We wanted these people to go, be able to go out and, and do what they wanted to do. Here in Los Angeles, the guilds are very well known and they're a force. They were really involved in an important part in getting this first summit off the ground. The Screen Actors Guild and the Directors Guild have been around since the 30s. The Writers Guild since the 50s and the Producers Guild since the 60s. The women's chapters of these groups who had been in existence for decades had never had a joint event. It took discussion at our little Women in Entertainment Summit to bring them together. Out of that shared event, job opportunities were discussed, partnerships were formed, and another series of events was planned to keep that momentum going. And when we stood there and we heard the optimism that came from that community that was solely built to support each other, it was exactly what we had hoped for. Women in Entertainment is only a year old and we're still learning, but we're flexible and we listen. Women in Entertainment is not a corporation. We have no paid employees. We have no celebrity face. And trust me, not everything we've tried has worked. But what we found with each step and with each thing that we tried is that we would be okay. I found out that I would be okay and that our work is important. That kept being validated. So a year ago, I was afraid I'd be speaking to five people, but spoke to hundreds. And with each other small step, we're speaking to thousands. Next week, I'm sitting down at our second summit, and I'm sitting down with the president of GLAAD. I'm welcoming the first female filmmaker from Saudi Arabia, and I'm having conversations with Fortune 100 companies on initiatives that I would have never dreamt of. Thank you. So don't, don't be paralyzed by the fact that you, you don't think you can change the world with your one idea. The small steps do matter and you'll make a difference to someone. And you'll hear from those people. You'll hear from those who you affect and they'll join you and they're gonna make your cause bigger. It, if I had one thing to leave everyone with, no matter what your cause, what your purpose, what your idea is, the smallest step in the right direction will be the biggest step of your life. Thank you. <laughs>